Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Muet Lessons. The Muet Listening Paper is a short test about give or take 30 minutes. It consists of three parts. Part one consists of eight questions. The first six questions require you to fill in the blanks with short answers of not more than three words. The questions could come in the form of completing a sentence and also in the form of a graphic organizer, like a flow chart, for instance. Then, you'd have two multiple choice questions. You know, A, B, C, D, where you pick an answer. That's part one. Part two has six questions, and they're all multiple choice questions ranging from three options given to six options given. Now, this may be the easiest part of the paper because all the answers are there. You just need to choose the best option. Then comes part three. There are six questions here. You would have to complete these sentences with answers of not more than five words. Now, part three is also a bit different. Instead of listening to one long text, you listen to three shorter ones. For every text played, you tackle two questions. And that brings us to a total of 20 questions. The good news is each audio text is played twice, so you have time to locate your answer in the first round and to verify your answer in the second. And there's another piece of good news. The audio text use local voices, so you won't have to worry about accents you're unfamiliar with. So we move on to the second section of our video, listening skills. Now in this video, I'm going to focus on three skills. One, recognizing main ideas. Two, listening for supporting details. And three, listening for specific information. Since skill number one, recognizing main ideas, and skill number two, listening for supporting details, they are both related. I will cover them together. The main idea is the key point or the central thought of the text. It answers questions like what does the person want to say about this topic? What is he trying to get across? And supporting details support or explain more about this main idea. So how do we recognize the main idea and its supporting details? Look out for verbal cues or signposts. These include linkers and sequence connectors. For example, words like firstly, secondly, besides, furthermore, however, finally. Let me show you a sample. Of course, in a listening test, you're not lucky to have the transcript of the text in front of you. But this is just to help us point out the signposts to you. 
To find out what the main idea is, you have to ask the question, what is the paragraph about? It's about COVID-19. What about COVID-19? Low number giving a false sense of security. That's your main idea there. Now read on. Spot the signposts. They have been highlighted in green for you. Signposts like these usually signal an idea or example that supports the main idea. Another way of locating the main idea is by listening for words or phrases that are repeated. Let's look at another example. Notice how the word mask is repeated throughout. Sometimes the word is substituted by its pronoun. In this case, they and them. These signals supporting ideas are round central idea. Of course, it is easier identifying the main idea and supporting ideas when we are reading. That's why it's crucial to listen attentively. Listen to the ideas rather than individual words. Jot down these ideas. Another important skill is listening to specific information. Here, we're listening for details of a particular piece of information. Very much like a tourist on the LRT. He's listening for a particular station he wants to get off. So here, we need to listen to information that answer the basic WH questions of who, what, where, and when. And you need to know what information you're looking for, which means you need to study the questions before you even start listening to the text. Take a look at these questions and then listen to the text to locate the answers. The police are anticipating a higher volume of traffic as people are taking the opportunity to return to their hometowns now that the interstate travel ban has been lifted. Police reminded travelers to follow the speed limit at all times. Once home, people should avoid hugging or shaking hands with those vulnerable to the virus, especially the elderly. Put on a face mask when talking to them at all times. Practice social distancing of one meter at least. This is true especially for crowded areas like markets and hawker centers. Patrons of eateries should also keep to a maximum of four per table. These patrons are advised not to share utensils or eat from the same bowls. Although the number of cases have been on the decline, the public is reminded to remain vigilant. Were you able to locate all the answers? Let me help you with this. When you read through the questions, highlight your keywords. You could highlight words like home. Then look at questions one and two under home. Number one says avoid. So you know you're looking for something you shouldn't do. Number two says where. Try and listen for this word or synonyms of this word. In this text, the presenter uses the word put on instead of where, but it means the same thing. Now listen to the text again and check your answers. 
the police are anticipating a higher volume of traffic as people are taking the opportunity to return to their hometowns. Now that the interstate travel ban has been lifted, police reminded travelers to follow the speed limit at all times. Once home, people should avoid hugging or shaking hands with those vulnerable to the virus, especially the elderly. Put on a face mask when talking to them. At all times, practice social distancing of one meter at least. This is true, especially for crowded areas like markets and hawker centers. Patrons of eateries should also keep to a maximum of four per table. These patrons are advised not to share utensils or eat from the same bowls. Although the number of cases have been on the decline, the public is reminded to remain vigilant. I hope you were able to locate and check your answers the second round. Now, you are going to try out one listening exercise on your own with no guidance from me. Listen carefully and answer the questions on the screen. For mobile devices, the harm is digital. The thief of your personal data, such as passwords, financial information, or private pictures and videos. You are rolling the dice every time you log on to a free network in a coffee shop, hotel lobby, or airport lounge. Think the problem is being exaggerated or that cyber thief only happens in large corporations? Consider that over half of the adults in the U.S. have their personal information exposed to hackers each year. Did you manage to get the answers? No worries if you didn't. With a little practice, I'm sure you will. Now today, we've covered three listening skills and we attempted two exercises. If, during the exercises, you found your answers different from the ones given, or if you're unsure of the spelling of certain words, fret not. My friend Zarina will help you clarify your doubts. Take it away, Zarina. Thank you, Doreen. You might wonder, after everything is done, after all the empty blanks are filled in, there may be one issue that still weighs on your mind. Have I given all the answers correctly? Are all my answers acceptable? Well, you not only have to look at spelling, but also grammatical rules. Everything that you have learned since primary school, they seem to matter a lot in a listening test. But do they really matter? Yes, they definitely do. I will share with you the do's of the listening test first. First off, do read the instructions carefully so your answers won't stray. Doreen did mention in the earlier part that you need to provide answers that should not exceed three or five words in part one, and specifically 
not more than five words in part three. The analogy is simple. When you have found the tall, dark, and handsome guy of your dreams, the one million dollar question is, is he the one? The same goes with your answers. You may think that the answer you have provided is the best answer, but does it fulfill the criterion of the correct answer for the Muet listening test? Let's study the following example. Listen to the public service announcement and answer the following question. The public is advised to adhere to the three W's as recommended by the Ministry of Health Malaysia in light of the COVID-19 pandemic. Wash hands frequently with water and soap. Wearing face masks is strongly encouraged in public areas and if symptomatic. Warn self and others to practice social distancing and avoid shaking hands with others. So, based on the three answers given, which answer is the correct one? Yes, all the answers A, B, and C are correct. In fact, they are all perfect answers. But which is the most accurate one? A, B, or C? The most accurate answer is A. What is wrong with B and C? Well, factually speaking, even though all three answers are correct, look at the number of words given in answers B and C. What is required in the instructions? The instructions require candidates to write the answers in not more than three words. Since the number of words for answers B and C is more than three words, the answers are not accepted as they do not adhere to the instructions. Therefore, the first do in listening is to Write your answers in the number of words required. That brings us to the second do, which is to read the instructions carefully. Never ever skip this important process. Always read the instructions given in all parts of the question. Part 1, Part 2, and Part 3. When the instruction requires you to provide your answers in not more than three or five words, do as it says. Even though your answer is correct, when written in more than number of words required, your final answer is unacceptable. Another crucial thing to remember is be careful with the spelling. This is the part where you need to know the difference between different and difference, effect and effect, then and then, and so on. Not only does spelling matter, grammatical rules also need to be observed attentively. Example, listen to the news excerpt on the standard operating procedures on the reopening the schools nationwide during the recovery movement control order phase 
and answer the following question. Education ministry officials at all levels will regulatory inspect schools at random to gauge the efficacy of the Standard Operating Procedures, SOP, to contain COVID-19 when they reopen. Education Minister Muhammad Radzi Muhammadjidin pledged to also conduct such inspections personally. Razi said it is important to see the SOPs in real-world condition as the schools would resume operations in unprecedented circumstances resulting from the world stopping COVID-19 pandemic. Next week, schools in Tirangano, Kelantan, Kedah, and Johor will open on Wednesday and Thursday, while in other states, Wednesday until Friday. The minister said the SOPs will be adjusted and fine-tuned based on observations. Teachers need to advise the students to stay home if they are experiencing symptoms or feel sick. The minister said the SOPs will be adjusted and fine-tuned based on observations. For question 15, I am guessing all of you agree the correct answer is A, the one where the word feel is spelled with F-E-E-L, and not the one spelled with F-I-L-L. -L. Answers that are incorrectly spelled are not accepted. Let's look at the next question. The correct answer is A, here you need to understand the use a future continuous tense that indicates that something will occur in the future and continue for an expected length of time. The correct answer is adjusted and fine-tuned, as it should serve the purpose of the tense. Another thing to remember is certain words like hyphenated words are counted as one word. Can you give me examples of hyphenated words? Yes, excellent. Words like self-esteem, best-selling, word of mouth, empty-handed are some examples of hyphenated words. But those words should be spelled the way they should be with a hyphen. Otherwise, it is not counted as one word anymore. Look at question 16 again. There is a word fine-tuned in the answer, since it is spelled with a hyphen, and furthermore, it is a hyphenated word, it is counted as one word. With the absence of the hyphen in the spelling, for example, when the word is spelled fine-tuned, the word is counted as two words. But remember, not all words are hyphenated, for example, public library, school canteen. Don't simply hyphenate any two words and assume they would be considered as one word. If you think the examiner will do that, think again. Now that we have discussed the do's in the listening test, it is time to reveal the don'ts. First and foremost, do not skip any question. Sometimes you may have difficulties in understanding the message delivered by the speaker in the audio text. This will result in spending too much time, disappearing the correct answer. At the same time, you have to follow the instructions attentively and observe the grammatical rules thoughtfully. It seems that you have to apply all the skills at the same time. I know the feeling, but remember, you have to sail through nonetheless. First, listen attentively to the audio text and write down the answers in the spaces provided. Check your answers when the audio is played for the second time. All the empty spaces need to be filled in. The second don't 
is. Do not write your answers elsewhere. For every part of the question, you are given one page in between. The in-between pages are for you to jot down any information pertaining to the text you have to listen to. There you can scribble or write the drafts of your answers before transferring them to the provided spaces in the questions. Please be mindful your final answers must only be written in the blank spaces provided, not anywhere else. This is because any answers not written in the spaces provided, even though they are correct, won't be regarded as official answers. Therefore, you can kiss your marks goodbye. Now that I have explained some of the significant do's and don'ts of Muat listening tests, our lesson has finally reached the conclusion. I hope you have found the information useful. All the best to you!